This is Excel Tips, a podcast for accounting and finance professionals, brought to you by CPA Australia. My name is Neil Blackwood, and in this episode, we're going to look at how we can add a vertical line to a line chart. Now, vertical lines are useful uh, for when you need to put in a sort of a demarcation uh, in a line chart. Uh, in our case, uh, we're going to split up what are actuals uh, against what a forecast. So the vertical line is going to indicate where the actuals finish, and then the forecasts will go from there. Now, the beauty with this technique is it's flexible. So as you add extra actuals to the table, the vertical line will move across to the right of the chart. So you can see the split between where the actuals finish and the forecast begin. Now, we are going to use a, a feature that's been around for a while called error bars. Now, to be honest, <laughs> most people don't use them and they do offer quite a few interesting solutions to charting problems. Now, Technically, if you want to see how to add the error bars and all the, the chart technicalities, then it's best to watch the companion video on the In The Black website because uh, that takes you through all of the steps. Uh, what I thought I'd cover in the podcast is a little bit more of the formula and structure that we're going to use. So we do need a specific structure to work with. So column A has the months of the year from July to June. Column B has the actual. So at the moment, it's got July and August figures in there. And then the forecast column, which is column C, that has all of the forecast for the whole year. So this could have been a budget as well. Now, we're actually not going to plot columns B or C. So the actuals or the forecast. What we need to do is create a separate column, which is going to be column D which has the actuals, if we have actuals, and then all of the future months will have the forecast. So we'll have a single data series for sales. So we're going to use the if function to populate that. So it's a very simple if function. It just, if the value in column B is greater than zero, then we'll use that. Otherwise, we'll use the value from column C. And so that will populate the sales data series as required. So we are going to need a fifth column. I've called it actuals, and then I've got a vertical line and then forecast. Now, the vertical line between actuals and forecast, so that's in the heading, you use a pipe character. It can be useful to split things up. So the pipe character is above the backslash on the keyboard, so underneath the backspace uh, on your keyboard, and you need to use the shift. So shift and backspace will give you this pipe character, which, as I mentioned, is just a vertical line. So I use that between the word actuals and the forecast in the heading. So that's actually going to appear in the chart. So the, the formula that we're going to use is only going to display one number. Uh, and I'll explain how that works. Uh, and all of the other cells are going to display the NA error. Now, believe it or not, Excel has a function that displays the NA error. It's called NA, funnily enough. And what uh, you might be asking, why would you want to display an error? Well, charts in Excel don't plot values that are the NA error. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a basically a data series that has one value in it. And I'll, I'll explain that value in a minute. All of the other entries will be NA. So in effect, we've got a data series that's only going to plot one value. And that value is going to be our um, vertical line, basically. So the formula is going to use the if function. We need to identify basically the last actual line. So that means we need to check the current row as well as the next row. Uh, and so we're going to use the AND function within an IF function. So the IF function requires what's called a logical test at the start of it, its first argument. And we're going to use an AND function to do that. Now, the beauty with the AND function is that it can look at multiple logical tests and return a single true or false. Now, in our case, we need to check the current row to see if it has a value. 
and then the next row, so this is in column B where the actuals are, we need to check the next row to see if it's empty, if it's zero, because that means if those two things are, are true, then we found the last actual row, and that's where we're going to display the value, and I'll explain what how we get to a value in a minute. So the AND function is basically AND, open bracket, and then you have a logical test, a comma, and then another logical test. And you can have as many as you like, uh, just separated by commas, and then a closing bracket. Now, to read the AND function, to understand how it works, if you read it out and you replace the comma character with the word AND, it sort of makes it easier to understand. So in our case, the, the formula that's going to be in um, cell E2 is going to read B2 is greater than zero and B3 equals zero. So that's what's within the AND brackets. And so that's saying that it has to be true. They both have to be true for the AND function to return true. If either of those isn't true, then the AND function will return false. So the only time an AND function returns true is if all of the logical tests between the brackets are true. A single false will then turn the whole AND function to false. AND is used commonly for validations and things like that as well. But in our case, it's just looking at two separate conditions. And when that condition is true, we are going to display a value. And otherwise, we're going to display the NA function. So, and, and, and that's just NA, open bracket, close bracket. Okay, that value that we're displaying. Um, I've used a, a separate cell to capture that. And what that cell used is two functions the round up function. So round does normal rounding, but the round up function will round a number up to a certain number of decimal places. Now, in our case, because we're working with large numbers, we're actually going to use a negative number for the number of decimal places. Now, what that does is it moves the, um, the rounding to the, the left of the decimal point. We're going to use minus four. So minus four means... Uh, basically round to the nearest 10,000. So if I used minus 5, that would be 100,000. Normally, you have a positive number which actually rounds to the right-hand side of the decimal point. That's like a 1 will round to 1 tenth, uh, and then 1 hundredth, etc. like that. So the, when you use a negative number, it actually rounds to the other direction. So uh, a, a minus 1, for example, rounds to the nearest 10. So we're rounding to the nearest 10,000 and we're rounding up. So what we need to do then is identify the largest sales value because this point that we're going to put onto the chart is going to be above the line. So we're going to have a sales line that could go up and down depending on the values. And we need to position a point above that line. And so what we do is we find the maximum value and then we round it up. So we use the max function on our sales listing column, which is column D. We find that maximum value, and then the round up will take that and then round it up to the nearest 10,000. So we should always be pretty much above the line. And that's the number that's going to be positioned into the actuals forecast column, so column E. That value is calculated in a separate cell in G1. And so I uh, use that number in column E to identify basically a number that's higher than the plotted line. OK, and so what happens is the uh, you select column A, or in this case, A1 down to A13. You hold your control key and then select D1 down to E13. And that's the range we're going to use for the chart. So we've got a, a range of months, we've got a range of sales, and then we've got a range which only has one value in it. All the others are NAs. Uh, and that's the range that we're going to put the, uh, the error bar from. So the error bar is going to go from the number, in our case, 130,000, and it's going to go down to the bottom. And the label on it will be actuals with that little pipe character forecast. And 
you can sort of move the uh, the heading around so that that little vertical line lines up fairly well with the uh, the dotted line, which will be the error bar going down. Now, as I mentioned, if you want to see the technicalities of adding that error line, just uh, check out the companion video on the In The Black website. So as I mentioned, error bars are... Something that's been around for a very long time in uh, Excel charts, but they haven't been used very often, but they do offer quite a few different solutions to problems that uh, you can get with charts. And especially being able to identify, especially on a time series, where something happened, uh, that sort of thing. You can even use them to sort of create a timeline uh, on a chart. So that's uh, something you can um, think about. Hope you found that useful. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Excel Tips, a CPA Australia podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, help others discover the show by leaving us a review or sharing this episode with colleagues, clients, or anyone else looking for the best Excel tips and tricks. To find out more about our other podcasts and CPA Australia, check out the show notes for this episode. And we hope you can join us next time for another episode of Excel Tips. Thank <laughs> you.